I told you we'd get to it. a showcase of the best, worst, and weirdest that television has to offer. The 1980s and 90s were a strange time in kids' programming, largely because of the very bizarre trend of adapting hyper-violent R-rated movies into syndicated cartoon series. This happened with Rambo. Rambo. Savage forces of General Warhawk threaten the peace-loving people of the world. There's only one man to call. Get me Rambo. From the canyons of skyscrapers to the canyons of remote mountain peaks, Liberty's champion is unstoppable. Robocop. Detroit, the near future. Officer Alex J. Murphy and his partner Ann Lewis fight to rid the decaying city of the criminal element which infests it. After being mortally wounded in the line of duty, Officer Murphy is outfitted by OCP with bulletproof titanium robotic parts and with computer-enhanced motor and sensory capabilities. He has become the ultimate super cop. Robocop. Most of Chuck Norris is of your... Chuck Norris. He's got nerves of steel and strength to match. Chuck Norris with his team, Pepper. It's too dangerous, Chuck. Wow. Too much. Too much. Kimo, the samurai warrior. Read Chuck's teenage apprentice. Tabe, the sumo champion. With Chuck Norris, they battle the sinister forces of the Claw. Remember this. And the ruthless Super Ninja. I'll finish Norris! Chuck Norris stars in Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. But the strangest example of this had to have happened when Murakami Wolf Swenson, the producers behind the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon, actually got the idea to license Troma Entertainment's The Toxic Avenger for a syndicated series. Yeah. They thought, somehow, it would be a good idea to translate this... ...and give all criminals their just desserts. ...into this. Your days of picking on nerds and accordion players are over, bonehead. Which, given that it was the 90s, probably really isn't all that surprising. But, of course, the question is always is, is it any good? Well, let's find out as we look at Toxic Crusaders. According to Troma president and creator of the Toxic Avenger, Lloyd Kaufman, shortly after the completion of filming of the Toxic Avenger 2 and 3, an agent named Joe Russo introduced him to Buzz Potemkin of Murakami Wolf, who pitched the idea of adapting the Toxic Avenger to cartoons. Troma agreed, but insisted on being actively involved in the process, to the point that Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Herz have writing credits on two of the episodes. Adapting a extremely gory horror comedy superhero concept like this was going to require some changes to be more kid-friendly. One of the first major things that was done was the renaming of the main character from the Toxic Avenger to the Toxic Crusader. Let's ponder that for a minute. The word Avenger was considered too violent for children's television, so they chose Crusader. A word that invokes one of the longest, bloodiest military conflicts between the Middle East and the West that's ever been in history. 
and some would argue is probably the instigator of most modern conflicts between the Middle East and the West today. Too violent for kids! Right, goofy ass cartoon, let's move on. The basic setup is a slightly more outlandish version of the movie's premise. Across the river from the idyllic suburban utopia that is Tromaville, New Jersey, is Island City, a dense industrial wasteland that pretty much does nothing but spew out pollution and toxic waste under the diabolical eye of the admittedly brilliantly named Dr. Kilimoff. Kilimoff is an alien from the planet Smogula and has basically one goal, pollute the entire Earth so as to make it inhabitable by his Smogulan brethren. Yep, it's one of those shows. For some inexplicable reason, the environment became a major hot-button issue in the entertainment industry in the late 80s and early 90s. Nearly every major movie and TV show had an environmental theme for a while. And with his toxic waste origin story, the Toxic Avenger character was well positioned to take advantage of this. Speaking of, the first episode is more or less a kid-friendly version of the first Toxic Avenger movie. Kill him off in an attempt to take over Tromaville sends a bunch of toxic waste via his radiation rangers just to spill it everywhere and cause problems. Meanwhile, awkward nerd Melvin Junko, who cleans up the Tromaville Health Club, is tormented by bullies, and pretty much it all plays out in the same way the original movie did. How about if you meet me at the pool after the club closes and we get to know each other better? Know what I mean? No, but I'll be there. Great. Oh, would you also do me one big favor? You want to hear me burp? No. I want you to wear a special outfit on our date tonight. Gee, I hope Invent thinks I look okay for our date. Pink isn't really my color. You look real good in pink. I got a big problem. Of course, this being a 90s cartoon, and with all the merchandising that implies, that means that, of course, existing characters were tweaked, and brand new characters were added to the mix as well. In the Toxic Avenger movies, Toxie has a girlfriend and later wife named either Sarah or Claire, depending on the movie. We're going to stick with Sarah for now. Sarah is blind and as such is able to, pardon the phrasing, look past Toxie's appearance and fall for who he is rather than what he looks like. Toxic Crusaders, for reasons I have no clue why the rationale was, changes her name again to Yvonne and rather than being blind, she just needs glasses, which she gets fairly quickly. Huh? But the minute you saw how ugly I am, you screamed. You're not ugly, you're very handsome. It's your toy that made me scream. <laughs> She's also kind of an idiot. Hey, sweet thing, you got something we want. Wanna guess what it is? <laughs> Gee, do I win anything if I guess right? I really could use a microwave or maybe a waffle iron. I'd love a waffle iron. Oh, I know what I need. How about a socket wrench? Of course, most of the characters in this show are idiots. Toxie's never been the brightest bulb in the lamp, and Kill Em Off, despite the doctor title, isn't much better. Especially since one of his henchmen, Psycho, always points out the flaws in Kill Em Off's latest plan before it even starts. In the last unpolluted city in New Jersey, Tromaville. I don't know if that's such a good idea, Doc. What if some complete and hopeless nerd falls into the gasoleum and transforms into a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength? Don't be ridiculous! Always. And once I adjust those fries to my evil purpose, I'll control the people of Tromaville. Then no one can stop me from polluting this disgustingly clean little town. And once I pollute Tromaville, the rest of the world is mine. What happens if one of the Toxic Crusaders gets a job at Burpo Burger and foils your plan? Impossible! In every episode. Michael, fill the spray tanks with pollution solution. Bonehead! Take a platoon of radiation rangers and toss those old duffers off the property. Yeah, and you said there was no fringe benefits to this job. I'm worried, boss. Like, what if the Toxic Crusaders' mom happens to be friends with one of those old biddies? And she calls on the Toxic Crusaders to help. And he and his fellow mutant creatures kick butt on our radiation rangers. What a preposterous idea! Every episode.
What garbage those Tromoville idiots bring to the recycling plant will actually be converted to noxious poisonous air, which will then be pumped out into the sky. Surrounded by a gigantic airtight dome, it will create the perfect environment for our invading smogulum goombas. Mm, a most ingenious plan. And I've kept it all secret, even from my associates. That way, the toxic crusader can't pick up any vibrations through his super-sensitive traumatons. But what if Mayor Grody finds out what you're up to and tries to throw a monkey wrench into your plans? Hmm, I wouldn't even consider such a preposterous possibility. Besides, that psycho's line. Oops, sorry. Which becomes as boring and repetitive as you might think. But enough about that, let's move on to the other supporting characters. Because this was an early 90s cartoon and toys still ruled the day, a bunch of other hideously deformed creatures of superhuman size and strength were created to give Toxie some friends to battle Kilimov's forces. We have Nozone, a mutated crop duster pilot with a pronounced nose capable of creating gale force sneezes, Major Disaster, a former soldier who is half man, half tree, and basically has Poison Ivy's power set, Junkyard, a mutated hybrid of a dog and a hobo, and Headbanger, a horrifying merging of a mad scientist and a surfing moron. They used to work for Kill em Off until Toxie and company provided good reason for them to change sides. I may be a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength, but I am a good guy. I knew we should have been a good guy. The bad guys never get the checks. That's the first smart thing you've said this whole episode. Say, ready for that beating now? Ah, uh, forget that. We want to be good guys now. Yeah, we want to be toxic crustaceans like you guys. As long as we get to hang out with cool babes like Yvonne. Well, I can't promise anything, but she does have a sister. Good enough. We're good guys now. Yeah, and here's the thing. While the character designs are interesting and creative and the voice acting is actually really, really good, story-wise, the plots are formulaic as hell. Obviously, Toxic Crusaders is meant to be more comedic than anything, but every episode follows one of two basic formulas. Kill em Off has a plan to ruin Tromaville, Psycho predicts what's going to happen, Toxie and company get involved, occasionally Kill em Off manages to trick them into missing the obvious evil he's doing because, again, just about every character in this series is an idiot. Eventually they figure out what's going on, and the Toxic Crusaders save the day. The other formula is basically the same, except it's not Kill em Off who instigates it, but his boss, Smargulan leader, Kazar Sostra. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. Kind of the problem, really. It's just all the same. The stories aren't particularly interesting. They're not all that funny and just generally not very good. And really, the same can be said for the animation. The animation on Toxic Crusaders is clearly not Murakami Wolf's best game. I mean, honestly. They couldn't even be bothered to make a real title sequence just using cheap editing tricks on footage from the episodes and a title card. Much like the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes cartoon, there's a lot of timing errors, and as such, a lot of the slapstick falls flat, and so do most of the verbal jokes. In fact, I go so far as to say... I'd say I don't care about this review anymore. And odds are, neither do you. Because this show really isn't good, but it isn't bad, it's just there. It is mediocrity personified. The show lasted only 13 episodes for one season, was cancelled, and then was promptly forgotten about. In fact, there hasn't been an official full DVD release set from Troma itself on this series, even though they own it. The only time it's ever been done is with the now discontinued Toxic Avenger box set they put out about 10 or so years ago. I mean, if you're really curious and would like to see this show for yourself, Troma has put all 13 episodes up on their official YouTube channel, and I'll throw a link in the description below if you want to see them. But honestly, I think I'm done. Seriously, I'm done. I don't want to do this show anymore. Okay? Because Toxic Crusaders is exactly an example of what, what happened, why television went so horribly, horribly wrong. Mediocrity. You look on the channels, we've got an abundance of channels today, and they're all the same. Cop shows, lawyer shows, medical shows, animated sitcoms, live action sitcoms, reality TV, cartoons, sports, and it all begins to blur together. I mean, my God.
it's just so draining and I'm tired. I am so tired. I mean, hang on, let me show you something. Let me, let me show you something. Here, I'm gonna show you guys something that I think you need to see. All right, come on, let's go. All right, coming out here. Okay, you see this? These are all the TV shows that I own. Okay? All of them. Some of these I bought to kind of... Some of these I bought to review later. I really did. And I was planning on getting to them at some point. But frankly, I can't be bothered anymore. Because I'm tired. I'm tired of slogging through entire season after season and show after show. And I'm really tired of slogging through bad to mediocre shows. I've tried to highlight some of the positives, but I'm just out of energy anymore. It's just tiring and it's boring and I dread having to make these videos anymore. It used to be fun. It's not fun anymore. It's not. So I can't do it anymore. I can't. I just cannot continue making this show and looking at so much bad TV. I don't even have TV anymore. That's been a side effect of this. Part of it was financial, but largely, I just didn't want to look at television anymore. I haven't had actual TV in my house for over a year and a half. I rely on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime, and that's it. And even then, I don't watch a lot of television shows that are offered by the cable or TV networks. So, I guess I'm saying that I'm kind of done. I'm done. I'm through. I'm through reviewing television. I mean, I know this will be disappointing to some of you, but what else can I do? It's not fun anymore. So what am I supposed to do? So... I don't really want to leave you guys with this kind of depressing rant as the final thing you see from me. So I think just so we can end things on a high note, I am actually going to do one more video in this series. One more episode of Into the Idiot Box. And it's going to be the one where a lot of people I'm sure have been wondering. So. Next time, we're going to look at what I consider to be the best television series of all time. Not my favorite, but what I consider the best TV series of all time. And just to give us a little bit of symmetry, I'll give you five reasons why. So, until then, I'm Dubious Khan. Join me next time for the final trip into the idiot box. All right, 85, what else did you find in Ampersand's files, aside from the stuff involving the Vincula Vindicte? Well, let's start with the most important thing. You did not come to his attention because of the reviewer's court, that's for sure. What? According to the shyster's notes, you didn't come to his attention until you got that locket from your Mysteries Incorporated review. Since then, he was contacted by someone, and that someone hired him to start harassing you. Why? What the hell did I do? 
Ampersand didn't write down his name. He only addresses his client by the letter V. But this client has been more interested in you ever since you got that locket and a lot of other stuff that you've been getting for the past couple of years. Well, if that's the case, then why lie about representing the court? Well, that part wasn't a lie. Ampersand does represent the reviewer's court, just not in your case. But V has been interested in those items, and those items seem to be wrapped around something that's about to go down, and you are right in the middle of it. Ugh, oh, great. Like, I don't have enough to worry about. Anything else? There is something else you might want to know. You know that little dork that keeps on popping up in your videos? You know, the one that sent you down to the place because of a, what that show with, uh, with Castle. Chaz Ramen Muncher? Yeah, that's him. Well, here's something I also found out in here. What he's been doing is not random fanboying. Ampersand paid him to do those things to you. Really? Well, that looks like there's something else that Mr. Ampersand and I are going to have to have a little chat about, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's about time that little weasel got the third degree. If you want, I can teach you a little bit about cognitive interviewing. And if that doesn't work, I got a blackjack upstairs if you want to borrow it. All right, is that it? I was only to read everything that you wanted about you and Miss Nightmare like you asked. Everything else I haven't got to yet. All right, good. Can you send the disc back to me, please? I'd really like to have some leverage over him if I need it. All right, I'll send this back to you as soon as possible. And one more thing, be careful. Whoever V is, has probably got a bullet or a spell with your name on it. But whatever it is, be careful. And seriously, thanks for all your help, 85. Anytime. Good luck, man. Yes, hello. May I speak to Douglas Ampersand, please? Yes, um, tell him this is Dubious Khan, and I need to speak to him about V. Uh, 